In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy and forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. If by that one person's transgression the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? For if by the transgression of the one that came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification came to reign in life to the one Jesus Christ. In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal, and life came in all. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. Where sin increased, grace overflowed all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace also might reign through justification. For eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, the word of the Lord. Be Responsorial <laughs> psalm. Our response is, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wist not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. In the written scroll it is prescribed for me, to do your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I announce your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips, as you, O oh Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. May all who seek you exalt and be glad in you and many those who love you, salvation. Say ever, the Lord be glorified. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory Jesus said to his disciples, Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. 
I mean, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline a table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord Jesus First of all, as was announced in the bulletin, I'm giving, I will give a talk after Mass today, after rosary, probably before <coughs> 9 o'clock, after you finish the rosary, on Israel and Palestine, and not not so much of a political analysis of the whole situation, but rather just to give us a biblical background exactly of what that area is. You know, um, where is Israel? Where is Palestine? It's based on uh, the stories in the Bible and who lives, who lives there, who, who went in there, who left there, who went, who came back. All of that based on all the stories in the Bible. So and we'll try to understand, um, again, not from <clears throat> an, a political perspective, but rather we would like to understand the story of this people, of this group of people, you know, uh, coming from that place and see uh, where all these things, um, you know, are kind of uh, located in terms of uh, biblical history. You know, um, all the, the people who live there, you know, we start from Abraham and so on and so forth. So um, if you have time, you can stay. And uh, otherwise, it will be posted again. And just like the, the, the way we do with our daily masses, uh, I will post it on our Facebook page, uh, rather YouTube page, uh, for those who are um, unable to attend or those who follow us um, online uh, all over the world. So that will be after mass today. Be prepared. Be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding. Always ready. Be prepared. There are things that we just have to prepare, and we know in advance what will it be, and there are things which are not. Like, you know, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we realized that uh, there are many things that we cannot prepare in advance. Like, there's no way we could have known that a pandemic would happen. At the same time, there are things we can do on a day to day basis, uh, pandemic or no pandemic. Like, um, how to save for the future, you know, saving for the future. Pandemic or no pandemic, that's something we just have to prepare for. You know, learning some skills or, you know, living a healthy lifestyle. Uh, things like this, because otherwise, when we start doing things and preparing things when it is already there, it becomes difficult. Because I remember uh, during the pandemic, um, I tried to learn how to cook, and I I have a rice cooker in my room, and with rice cooker, it's really easy. You know, it's one one is to one, one cup of rice, one cup of water turn it on, I come here to celebrate Mass, go back to my room, my room smells like rice. So the rice is cooked. One day I wanted to try, you know, I was looking through YouTube and, you know, for some reason, you know, I was just, you know, pining for uh, chocolate porridge. Um, so I said, maybe I can do it with rice cooker. So I checked YouTube, you know, oh yes, you can. well, okay, I did, you know, um, so always put rice, apparently for a porridge, you put, put more water. So I put more water, I put chocolates, and came here, celebrate mass, went back to my room. Lo and behold, like there was asphalt on my, <laughs> this, what, there was asphalt on my rice cooker. I could barely scoop it out. But I learned, you know, I learned. So since then, I realized I learned I'll never cook again. <laughs> but... Um, again, there are things we can do, uh, there are things we can learn, but things we can't prepare. So I think the gospel today is, is clear. Um, there are things that will certainly happen in the future. Death, end, you know, end of the world or the second coming of Christ when he comes back again, or our own death. There's no escaping. Uh, 
that we know based on our data ex experience there is some certain kind of end that happens and death is is one of them but i think what christ is telling us today is not so much in terms of trying to scare us of a certain death that would certainly come but rather to help us put everything in perspective how do we prepare and what do we prepare because christ says we don't know when we don't know how we don't know where it just it happens so i think when when we talk about preparing for the end times it's really about really growing in our faith as you know we always say our hope faith and charity it's three little things that we need in our lives and we always pray and i'm sure we we do pray faith hope and charity to keep growing in our faith <coughs> there are many things we will never understand in life but we keep asking the lord lord give me that faith give me that faith every day and keep me always hopeful for things to come. Hopeful, not probably things will not happen the way I want them, but let me be hopeful of what you will give me. I don't care what it is, I will be hopeful that whatever you give me is always the best for me. And growth in charity, to become more <clears throat> loving every day, which is the toughest of all, uh, because you know we are not superhuman we run out of patience we um, we have limitations um, we become um, angry we become impatient and it's not it's not easy loving sometimes becomes very challenging and it's one thing that we keep praying every day Lord please increase my love every day that whatever I do every day would always be based on that desire to to love you and so we don't stop living you know when Christ talks about end times you know it should not catch us like paralyzed like what would I do now but rather it would help us it should, hopefully it helps us to really prepare things by doing the things the very things that we do every day you know we don't stop living simply because we know that one day uh, things will end rather the way we prepare things in our hope to grow in our hope, faith, and charity are in the very things that we do every day. The things that we do every day, they are not separate. Preparing for the end times, preparing for our death, preparing for you know what will happen in the future in terms of our relationship with God, it's not something that is separate from our day-to-day -day lives. It is here in our day-to-day -day lives. You know, one of the one of these stories about uh, preparing and being prepared is. That of Saint Dominic Savio, you probably heard of that story. One day, you know, Saint Dominic Savio died as a as a young man. I think he died at fourteen years old, but he was he was very young. You know, he was um, uh, a student of Saint John Bosco. But apparently, one day, this young little boy was you know he was already quite ill. You know, when uh, that time, and Saint John Bosco uh, asked him. You know, he was playing football. Um, what would you do if God, you know, he was already, you know, failing in health. And St. John Bosco asked him, if God gives you another five minutes, now that you are playing your, your game, your football, if God gives you five la last five minutes, what will you do? This young boy, 14 years old, uh, told St. John Bosco, well, now I'm playing football. If God gives him another five minutes, I will keep playing football for the next five minutes. And I think that's precisely what being prepared is. Because it's easy to say, last five minutes, um, I think I'll have to go, uh, go to church and pray. Uh, I have to call a priest, uh, go to confession. I have to receive communion. Uh, maybe we might be preoccupied in doing these things. But holiness is in what we do every day. As St. John Bosco would say, if... In that very moment, you're praying the rosary. God gives you five minutes, finish the rosary. You know, whatever the five minutes takes you. If in that last five minutes you are uh, doing a food shopping, continue food shopping. You know, buy the best uh, thick bacon that, you know, you want in life. Um, continue doing things. 
Because the very things that we do every day, our holiness is there. Because hopefully, the things that we do, we always do them in the context of our love for God, not separate. Because otherwise, if we start separating our day-to-day -day lives with our prayer life, that our prayer life only happens when we are in church or when we are doing a rosary, then we are missing the point. Our prayer life is in the very things that we do every day. Every moment of our life is our prayer. In other words, every moment of our lives, we lift it to God, we communicate to God. It's almost like tweeting every day, like, you know, tweeting every second or posting on Facebook or Twitter every moment. Lord, I am cooking uh, asphalt right now for my, <laughs> for my breakfast. Uh, Lord, I'm driving right. It's updating the Lord. It's prayer. That's what prayer is. We communicate with God. And so today, again, as, uh, as we reflect on the gospel, uh, the Lord is not kind of scaring us about the end times or death. But rather, the Lord is just reminding us some things are certain, and death is one of them. And the only way for us to prepare is not to panic, not to be scared, but rather to realize that our holiness is really in the very things that we do every day. So that every day we hope and pray, Lord, as I live my life every day, please increase my hope. Let me be hopeful. Let me be faithful. And let me be more loving to you and to others every day. <clears throat>
Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand. Praise the glory of his name. Progress of all the churches. Grant us, Lord, we pray a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Your mouth, Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. A duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ, O Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please to you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and for me divine teachings, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from the evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us offer each other the sign of
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. <coughs> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, bless are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy to the the world. Our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be held by what you give us in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, that the power of God cast into hell Satan, and all evil spirits that prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored their help or sought their intercession, 
was left unaided. Inspired with his confidence, we fly into thee, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To thee do we come, before thee we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not the petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer them. Amen. Our Lady of Lords, have a beautiful day.